Well, Stephanie, over time, Suffolk is becoming a place where a rural economic engine is swiftly getting a more suburban feel. And as you can imagine, that has its great highlights and growing pains. Suffolk, Virginia, the sprawling city that once boasts being the peanut capital of the world, is rapidly evolving before our eyes. Construction crews are commonplace in North Suffolk, where Amazon is building this multi-story robotics fulfillment center, a first for the state that will add an estimated 1,000 jobs. Not far away, more development, new housing options springing up, and just up the street, if you blink, you might miss a new business opening up in Harborview or along College Drive. I really. I feel like the city's doing a great job as, as making Suffolk grow, so I think that whatever they're doing right now is working. New energy, new vibes, and I ventured downtown to speak with a Suffolk native who's the new co-owner of High Tide. The city's been super supportive. They were really easy to work with. Um, They've done a lot of different programs, I think, that are helping businesses stay down here. Empty buildings have long plagued the area, but Kata 2 says what they're cooking up at her restaurant is further evidence things are turning around. It used to be nobody really hung out downtown, and now you see families just walking around at nighttime, everybody going out to eat. And more attractions are on the way. We were really excited to hear about the art district when we first came in. I think that's something they're continuously working on. To bring down here. One challenge in moving forward, making sure a rich heritage that propelled the city to this point isn't forgotten. The overseas and the planters' peanuts and just the whole history, you know, I do oysters. So, you know, they found a whole, a whole group of oyster boats. Um, right here in the Nansen River last year, which is really cool. And we have a lot of history I think people just don't know about. Mary Hill, president of Suffolk's African American Historical Society, couldn't agree more. That's how we made our living. Oystering that this house was built off of my dad working the river as an, a waterman. Uh, this entire village was established from that industry. The journey to sit down with this seventh generation Suffolk resident took us to another part of the city steeped in significance she wants to make sure is not only remembered but protected as it grows. Protecting the environment of the rivers because of the development and the silk that is running off into the river that's, you know, smothering our oysters. When casting her ballot, she says she'll be choosing candidates focused on inclusiveness and transparency. They say you have to, to blend the, the old in with the new, but the, the new that, that's being encroached upon us is, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 homes that are totally out of our reach. She needs to see candidates strive and create a way forward that keeps communities connected amid a building boom. So where is the vision for Hobson? Where is the vision for Crittenden Eclipse? Where is the vision for Chuckatuck? Where is the vision for Oakland? She says take a tour and you'll find out what the people want. That's exactly what we did. And we thank both ladies. Mary is also hoping city leaders advocate for Centera Bell Harbor to become a full 24 hour accredited hospital and immediately move forward with replacing the Kings Highway Bridge in the same location, which she says will reconnect their communities. Anita Blanton, 10 on your side.